before we get to, you know, the hows, um, let's talk about the whys. Um, so what is uh, driving a migration at this point? And, and, and to take that even further, what should the folks who are considering entering into the process, what should they be preparing for? What are, what are some of the, the fundamental um, steps yeah. that they need to take to get, to get ready for such a migration? Yeah, sure. I mean, at the end of the day, what's what's driving these is a couple factors. One, you know, it's timing. Um, when when VMware introduced uh, their new pricing models, a lot of people got hit really hard with, I've seen, you know, 70x, 100 plus x, some crazy numbers that, that have introduced um, a little bit of visceral reactions, if you will, in the market where people are just like, okay, there's no way I'm going to pay that. This can't be real. So they sit and they wait, uh, and some were lucky enough to take advantage of, you know, you know, the the pre migrate or the sorry, the pre um, uh, the, the the pricing they received prior to the Broadcom acquisition um, of VMware and, and extend that in. But it also creates a perfect storm because sometimes the hardware and the life cycle of that hardware doesn't align with the software side of it with VMware. Um, so that kind of the, the things you look for there are exactly that timing. And that's, again, why I have those campaigns we talked about with the seamless switches. So if you happen to have an upgrade that's coming in place and it's sitting in front of you and it's really, really, really crazy numbers compared to what you paid in the past, but you just bought new hardware. OK, let's let's look at what we can do there, because the hardware itself is the hardware. Now, granted, with the AI model that you, you saw me demonstrate and how scale computing has the under the cover hood. Um, autonomous infrastructure that takes advantage of the the ability to be AI under the covers. We want to make sure that 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 stays really core to the product and how we can keep things automated and keep things running. So the HCL, we're working to make that easier to absorb into those conversations where people are hitting the step where, okay, my hardware is coming up, but my VMware is needed now. How do we bridge that gap? Well, we come in and we talk about those uh, capabilities, whether it be switching to newer hardware that's actually going to be better performing anyway and bringing that from a trade-in perspective or a rip and replace where we give you valuation to those hardware pieces. Um, the actual software itself can be put onto existing hardware that matches the HCLs and we can help align those pieces of the puzzle, as I said, as we figure out if that's a good match or not. Because at the end of the day, that the, the ability to get people onboarded onto scale computing is going to do a couple things for them. One, it's going to simplify their lives and infrastructure. Now let's 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 put brass tacks to it and understand that it is a change. Change is never easy in any IT environment. It it just isn't. Change in general is never easy for for most folks. But in the world of infrastructure, in the world of what you've been doing for X amount of years, putting a change in place seems very scary. So one, you have to prepare yourself for a change. But be open minded to the change. Understand that you're putting things in place because you've been doing things a long time and looking at options that can actually make your life easier and give efficiency and value to not just you and your organization, but everybody that supports it. Your workloads are considerations. Would they run faster? Would they run better on newer, better equipment? Probably so. Can we deploy it faster and get it in the hands of the users faster? Yes. Can we recover faster and get it back into the hands of the users if something goes wrong? Yes. Can we be a better value at the end of the day from a TCO standpoint when you're comparing to what virtualization costs are today on the new world of VMware compared to what scale has been and continues to bring to the table now and in the future? Yes. So the considerations are endless really in the minds of the IT generalists and the IT directors and those that lead it. But at the end of the day, you're bringing to the table that efficiency and that flexibility model to the end users and the partners to bring them to the table and get them based onto a scale computing methodology for now and into the future. Yeah, so it, so if it were you and 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 you were going to do it, I mean, talk a little bit how, about how you do it. I mean, do you, you know, yeah. you, I mean, rip and replace is, uh, is you know. It, scary it, thing. It, it sounds scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, though it's not quite the same as it used to be, but yeah. the same, concepts right so what do you what what would you do i mean are you talking about maybe taking a few instances are you talking about i mean how do you think about you know yeah do you baby it, step it do you in? eat the uh, elephant right yeah right. I exactly mean, walk through how you'd think about it on the on the other side 
Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you you, you got to you take into consideration the organization and you know what's running and what's important, right? So in most cases, we're gonna we're gonna run before or we're gonna crawl before we can walk, which before we can run, right? So I probably take the walking approach to start, not necessarily crawl, because again, I'm experienced with what this capable uh, what the capabilities of the scale computing platform are. So I'm gonna walk right in the door. I'm gonna identify some secondary workloads or applications, virtual machines, physical machines, whichever side of the equation they live on today that can be moved over as my test bed. And I'm going to get those over to the door and I'm going to maybe leverage a Cronus in the backup model to give me the quick migration capabilities and get it pushed over, cut it off, turn it on, let it run, feel it out, make sure it's what I want. Because at that point, from the, from the standpoint of getting it stood up and testing it the first time, to being able to rinse and repeat that model becomes very easy in, in the day of the life after the first few are done, because then we can introduce automation. Uh, one thing I didn't mention a lot of, but we do have the ability to do is, is leverage automation scripts and playbooks that are already built from spinning up new workloads or to migrating and, con and um, cloning and spinning up existing workloads through our Ansible Galaxy collection that is already out there in the world. So if you go to Ans Ansible Galaxy and look up scale computing, you will see an entire playbook built with those automations that we can bring to the table to help align. After we get those first few walk-in, we can run with those automations. So you have some different models there that can get you in the door. But I think the first thing is literally, if you want to crawl, let's crawl. Let's get one in the door and let's move it and show you how quick and easy it is and stand it up. Because once we do so, it's going to be a road to success from that day forward. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.